Hello everybody, my name is Tag, and welcome to the World Tour. I finally am doing it. Uh, after 47 episodes and uh, 13 months, I have finally decided to uh, bite the bullet and record like a one hour long world tour. This video is going to be as uncut as I possibly can make it, uh, because I want to make it as just like easy uh, for myself and also just as much of an easy flow for you guys so that it's kind of just a thing you can put in the background and uh, enjoy. Before I get started, I've never done this before because I'm not a huge fan of people who beg for subscribers, but if you end up watching the video and by the end of the video you're like, dang, that was pretty cool, maybe subscribe. I just want to see if me mentioning subscribing uh, actually bumps it up. If it doesn't, I'll stop because, you know, it's pointless. But uh, if it does, I might make it a normal thing. Anyways, uh, you know what? Let's get on with it. Here we are, just about zero zero. This is where it all started. I spawned right here. And uh, I ended up walking over here to this little patch of trees. I uh, broke all these trees and then I moved over here to uh, this little stone area where I mined down here and got my first bits of stone. From here, I then moved all the way over here where I built my first house. This is in fact uh, my first ever house that I built in this world. Uh, I built the house and then I made this little quarry for my second house that I eventually ended up building. I had a little melon farm here, which I built at the end of the episode. Inside, I have some tools that have been here for quite a long time. I think these were my little cousin's tools, because I think I like let them stay in this little house uh, when they joined, you know, somewhat like, you know, like a year ago. Uh, but yeah, this is my first ever house that I made in this world, and it is still here. Uh, my monorail, which I will show you, oopsie, in a bit. Uh, my monorail kind of just pierces right next to it. Luckily, I did not have to move the house. It can stay exactly where it is, uh, and it's a real bit of history for the world because this thing has been here for just so darn long. I mentioned the monorail. Uh, basically, right here is spawn, and I ended up building this lovely monorail right here just so uh, people, or at least the original plan for it was so people could spawn here and they wouldn't have to walk through my dangerous, like, dark jungle. Uh, of course, none of that is really jungle anymore, but when I first built the world, uh, or sorry, when I first made the world, it was all jungle. So I ended up building this monorail that uh, took us all the way from spawn to my base. And then it also has a few other stops that I've added along the way. This way actually goes all the way down to the end portal. Although there's not really anything special, and it takes quite a long time to ride, so I probably won't go that direction today. Behind us, we have Preposterous Park, which is my lovely little uh, Disneyland-inspired theme park which uh, is definitely not finished yet. I'll give you a little overview of it. So far, there's only one completed ride, uh, which is in Desert Land, which is behind the castle. So I have a lovely looking, uh, like it's in it's Indiana Jones uh, inspired. So if you've ever been to Disneyland California, not California Adventure, just Disneyland in the state of California, uh, and also I think it's the same in Florida, actually. Uh, if you've gone on uh, Indiana Jones, you can kind of imagine the Indiana Jones adventure ride, but with more of a desert theme. I'm a big Disney guy. I won't be really giving any more information about this place. I won't even tour it. Uh, if you want to see uh, the ride through of my only completed ride so far, uh, click that little thing that's going to pop up right now in the top right corner. So yeah, this is Spawn. I suppose that we should do exactly what anyone who joins into the world uh, first would do and get right on to the monorail. Uh, before we go, I do have a little design for my monorail. Instead of having stops, I just have a powered rail section. So it slows you down, and then you have the option of getting on uh, or, you know, getting off. And uh, if you don't want to get off at that station, you kind of just manually go forward, and you'll get back right on the track. And I think it's a pretty good system. Would recommend it to uh, really anyone who's making one of these and doesn't want to have to stop and then pick up their minecart and then uh, place it back down. Over here, we have a quarry that I recently built. Uh, once I'm done getting all of my materials from this, I will patch it back up, and it'll be like nothing happened. Right here, the city that you're seeing is New Bonk City. Uh, this is a fairly new project of mine. To the left, you can see an unfinished building. All of these buildings have been built probably over like the past three months. Uh, it's a small project that I kind of go back to every once in a while when I get bored. Eventually, I do want to have it basically take up the remainder of this little jungle area being separated by that pond right here. And this is the first monorail station, New Bonk Station. So this is the city of New Bonk, like I said. Uh, it comes right on down here into a little uh, eating area and a little back alleyway. Right here is my art museum with, uh, you know, a bit of my banner art that I've done over the years, or sorry, over the months, this world isn't that old. 
Um, but yeah, this is some of my banner art, you know, some random stuff, some flags over here, a fox right there. Uh, kind of just fun stuff. Most of these buildings are empty, uh, on the off chance that I do end up putting something inside of the buildings. Uh, it'll be something like one-off on like only one of the floors like there. Like you saw, there's a banner art area. One of these buildings is going to have a map, which is actually going to be the one that's being built right now, but, you know, that's for another episode. Alrighty, so let's get back on our minecart, and we can take you to one of my personal favorites. So this is my sign that I wrote. If you look at it quick, it says, Welcome to New Duns Population 1. And over here is my castle. This thing I recently finished completely furnished on the interior. You got a great view from that angle. Uh, and it is right... It's like the biggest thing in my world, I think. It's the most striking thing. I've never actually built a castle like that before until I started this world. I already have wanted to, because there's a lot of really cool castles out there that you can search up on YouTube, some people building some really incredible stuff. So I just completely won it, and I made... Uh, this castle, which I think I'm calling it Brimstone Keep or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I, I have a bunch of names for all these places, but I end up just calling them like the castle or the city, you know? Uh, so this is Brimstone Keep. I based it off of a, it's like a, it's for the Xbox, uh, I think 360, like the Minecraft ad for it. There's a castle that they show that has Netherrack roof. So I ended up building the roof out of Netherrack, as you can see. But here we are. Uh, we went from spawn past New Bonk City to my uh, main base area. By the way, I don't think I said this already. This is 100% survival, and I actually used to play this world on an iPad with a Bluetooth controller until I uh, switched to my glorious Xbox Series X, which handles this world like a champ on uh, almost max render distance. Oh, I don't think I have it up right now. But yeah, like I was saying, this is my main base area. So when I first came over here from my first house, somewhat like, you know, 12 months ago, I ended up building, there used to be a hill right here, naturally, and um, I built my first ever, like, bigger house. So I built my main house that I actually stayed at for quite a long time until I ended up wanting to build a castle. So I ended up tearing that house down and I relocated to a spot you'll see later. Um, it's an exact, re uh, exact recreation, and then I built a castle on top of it. Right here, we have my little cousins, uh, their little, uh, I guess it's like a, it's a compound, so they kind of just live here. This is their two little houses, so this is my uh, little cousin Allen's house, uh, kind of designed to their liking, and then over here, we have my little cousin Teva's house. And uh, she requested a loft, so she has a loft, and she actually has a really nice view from her window. Adjacent to where my cousins live, we have the big building that I just mentioned, which is the Grand Orchid Suites and Dining uh, Hotel. So I built this pretty recently. It is still not finished as there is no interior, but it is a oak monstrosity. The amount of oak this thing took is depressing. Uh, when I was building this, I would go insane every single time I finished a floor because I knew I would have to get, you know, 25 more stacks of oak logs. Uh, but it's finally done now, at least the outside is. I still have to do the interior, but that seems like a lot of work, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stall that one for as long as I can. Originally where this hotel is, uh, my cousins and I cleared it all out and uh, turned it into a flat plot of land, and then we basically gave people plots of land to build their own houses on, and uh, I think there were six houses in this little area separated uh, by the monorail. So there was a monorail right there, which uh, kind of cut this area into an, its own little section. And then it was also blocked by the wall right here. But all the areas in between, people would come and they'd build their little house. And eventually I got kind of tired of how it looked and I wanted more of a grand thing over here. So I turned it into a hotel. So instead of being living areas, it turned into a lovely looking hotel. And uh, what a lovely looking hotel it is. Let me give you a nice air view of it. I think it looks really, really cool. Uh, and it actually has, I think, a total of like 45 rooms in it or something like that. Uh, so it's six by six rooms and there's 45 of them, which is quite a lot. And also there's three suites up there. There's a lovely looking pool, as you can probably see, with uh, sea lanterns. Sorry, not sea lanterns. Uh, what are these called? Redstone lamps. I definitely need to add a like redstone uh, like switch to it so I can turn it on and off. I think that'd be really cool. I didn't actually think of that until right now. So I'm definitely gonna have to do that. You have three different uh, diving boards and uh, a nice fire pit and some eating areas. And I don't even know what this is, but I just made a little indent in the pool because I thought it made it more interesting. This path over here takes you to Peony City, which you will see very soon. Uh, and yeah, I think that's basically all you got for the hotel. Uh, over here, eventually there's gonna be a little restaurant and then the main room you have a reception desk guest relations with a little bell that you can ring uh, to get the uh, what the what the the, the hotel op I don't know 
you can get their attention with the bell and then you can come back here and you can see uh i kind of based this off of the grand californian in uh disneyland uh it's a hotel i uh, you can look up pictures if you want this is the event center i hold events here obviously uh this is one of the three incredibly long uh hallways unfortunately zombies have broken all the doors i don't want to get into that though it makes me so angry um and then uh, yeah, you got a nice third story right here, another one of those long hallways, and then over here you have the suites, which will, you know, eventually be furnished just like everything else, uh, the three largest rooms in the hotel, and I think that's just about all I have for the Grand Orchid Suites and Dining Hotel, uh, this was a very big project, it's technically not done, but I like to think it's at least partially complete, because it looks nice on the outside. So if we come on back to the main path, uh, if you were to go to the left right here, when you got off of the monorail, instead of coming down here, you can see, uh, you can get an idea of what used to be where the hotel is. Some of these houses still stand, so if you can just imagine houses like this, uh, exactly six plots of land where the hotel is now, uh, that is what it used to look like. And I ended up destroying it and then building a hotel there, just because I like the look of the hotel more. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, some people who have joined my world. They have built little houses, most of them unfinished, unfortunately. Uh, like this one right here and that one right there. This one is finished. This is actually like a panda sanctuary my cousins built. Point being, uh, there used to be these kind of houses over there, but now it's a hotel. The monorail does actually continue going this way to the final station uh, on the uh, negative X coordinate. And uh, it is Peony Station, which is because it's right next to Peony City. It connects to it. And then above is actually a house that I'm working on right now for one of my friends. Basically, what I'm doing is uh, whenever I want a house for someone who joins my world, I basically just build, like, a fun house that I've, you know, already wanted to build. So, like, in this case, it's uh, a house that's uh, kind of on stilts with... Um, it's on the very top hill, and it has a little infinity pool. So my, my workaround for building people houses in this game is to just build something that I already wanted to build, and then just make them live in that. There's a lovely little pond out here with uh, her choice of flowers. And uh, there actually used to be a panda that was swimming in this pond with its child, and I think it's gone now, which is sad. Uh, but, you know, it's back in the wild. Eventually, the monorail will continue going that way, as far as you can see through that hill. Uh, but for now, I stopped just about here through the tunnel with a bit of construction going on, but it's it's a lot of work, so I'll probably put that off until further notice. Let me grab some more fireworks really quick. Uh, so as you can see by the wall, I kind of have you know a wall that uh, protects the main area of my base. So this area is slowly being uh, you know more lit up and more inhabited. Uh, but for now, it is still outside of the wall. I won't extend the wall, but uh, I'll probably make another one eventually if I get a good amount of stuff going on over here. But through the wall, you have a completely safe area, uh, which is my civilized area. So this all used to be, if you can imagine, extremely, extremely dense jungle. Like, very, very dense jungle. Uh, and also, all of this is terraformed, so, you know, if you kind of dug under here, you can see how much I really propped it up. And some of it I filled in, some of it I've dug down. Uh, this pond right here, which I call Panda Beach, I think. I can't actually remember. Uh, yeah, Panda Beach. Uh, this is a completely man-made little pond with man-made terraforming right there. Uh, I built these cliffs also, although this is actually a hill. I just made more appealing cliffs for it. Um, there is my castle up there, Brimstone Keep, which overlooks this little uh, civilized area of my world. I have one of these, like, stacks of signs, which I absolutely love the look of. New Bonk City is that way, Brimstone Keep is that way, obviously, New Dunn Station is that way, and then Peony City is that way. I love these little things. Uh, they give so much character and so much life to it, and it, you know, is useful also because people who just join the world for the first time can know exactly where to go to go everything. I'm probably going to keep uh, the castle tour for last because I don't actually think I fully toured the castle uh, in my entire Let's Play series yet. Oh yeah, that's what I call it. This is the preposterous enclosure. This whole area is my preposterous enclosure. So it is a very safe area. Mobs don't spawn here because it's just so lit up. And it is the most uh, civilized and inhabited point in my entire world. You're now entering uh, what I used to call my lawn. Because for quite a long time, this entire area was just grass with nothing on it. Uh, but then I just filled it up with uh, one of my favorite flowers in the game, which is peonies. As you can see, there is quite a lot of them. Uh, this hall right here is my main base, but I won't show you that quite yet. I'm going to wait a sec because right here I have my giant Diet Coke can. I'm a bit of a stickler for Diet Coke. I really, really like it. 
Um, it is probably my favorite soft drink of all time, uh, and it's really good. I have at least one a day. Not the most healthy uh, addiction, but it's really good, so I don't really care. But, uh, you know, I built a giant Diet Coke can, um, and inside I used to have every single type of panda. Uh, unfortunately, every single one except for the OG big boy chubby panda who has been in this world for quite a long time, at least a year. Uh, all of them have died, except for Big Boy Chubby Panda. In fact, they didn't actually die, I think they just disappeared. Uh, despawning in Bedrock is a big problem, unfortunately, but you can't really do anything about it. The pandas that I used to have were Josh, uh, Big Boy Chubby Panda, Bon Bon, Crunchy, Bonk, and then, uh, Hank. And then there's Chunky! He's dead! So those, Hank and Chunky were the first people to ever despawn. Uh, and then Josh, Bon Bon, Crunchy, Bonk. Those guys just despawned pretty recently. And then Big Boy Chubby Panda is the last panda alive. Which is an unfortunate prospect. If we come on over here, this is the uh, ground entrance to my base. So usually since I have an elytra, I just fly in and out of the big uh, hole. Uh, but then right here, I have uh, uh, an entrance for people who don't have elytras. Right here, I used to keep my skeleton horses here. Uh, right now I have Arthur which is one of my main skeleton horses, although I don't really ride horses since I, you know, have an elytra, which I actually need to repair pretty soon uh, over there. By my uh, cousin's houses, I actually have two of my other skeleton horses. I've just left them there with them. And right here is the entrance to my favorite and least favorite Minecraft project I've ever started, Peony City. This place sucks and is also the best, mainly because... The reason I say it sucks is because I worked on this project for so freaking long. I worked so hard on this project and it took me so long and it was so resource intensive and I built this humongous city from what you can see every single one of these houses had an interior to it but I soon figured out that that much stuff is really really bad for your world so I ended up going through and I removed every single interior and it was very painful uh, and it sucked but the project itself it looks wonderful it is this lovely city surrounded or, sorry, surrounding this big temple right here with a moat, and then the city is protected by a humongous wall that uh, reaches all the way around with several, you know, exits to the city uh, that all go in interesting directions. It is a humongous project. It is the first major project that I've ever probably done in this game. And uh, this project itself pretty pretty much started me on big projects such as the Creeper Farm, which I am yet to show you, uh, my castle, New Bunk City, that kind of jazz. So if we walk on into Peony City, you have a lovely moat with uh, some pretty crappy coral decorating. Uh, I basically just did this because it was my first time working with coral in quite some time, so I, I just did it, and it, it looks fine. I might make it deeper one day, uh, but there's not much moat to make deeper, so I don't know. If you walk in, you have a giant pixel art of a peony, which uh, I'm very proud of this, actually. It still looks pretty good, although I need to figure out a better lighting system because the torches look horrible now that I look at it. A lot of peony, and uh, this is actually the first time, this is the first major build, I guess, that I ever built uh, from the nether update. So 1.16 came around, and I built this, and then I used crimson for the floors because, you know, pink wood, pink flower. It worked out, uh, and I think it looks really good, and also some blue flames in the in the corners. I think it's fun. Uh, I built this, you know, 1.16 first build, and I think it turned out really good. If we cross the street, this is the north side of the city. So that's north, that's south, that is west, and that is east. Uh, there's not really an east part of Peony, because, uh, you know, that, that just doesn't exist. Uh, this is the first building that I ever built in this city. It is kind of two conjoined, and uh, it's a really good style, actually, and it looks pretty cool. This is a little alleyway with some posters. Uh, <laughs> I remember my cousin lost her panda, so she made wa wanted signs, or not wanted, missing signs all over the world, so that's pretty funny. This is my to-do board with uh, Gladiator Arena, which I completely forgot about. I need to do that. Uh, New Bonk City. I need to build a house in every biome. I want to get every music disc, and that is apparently it. Uh, there is a lot of stuff to take in in this place. This is the only finished and furnished building in the in the city right now, uh, and it is my weaver, or, you know, the banner maker, basically. This is where I come to uh, make banners, so I have all of the types of dye, which, by the way, I have all this dye because of uh, my flower machine. Uh, so I, I didn't cheat this in, I promise. 100% survival, I swear. I have every single type of of uh, the banner patterns, including uh, the golden apple one, the enchanted golden apple one. So that's pretty cool. Right here, I have my loom, and uh, everything else is basically just decoration. 
This is the pathway that I said that connected to the hotel. So that's a fun little connection right there that kind of just ended up happening randomly. Uh, over here, you can go to Peony Station, which is what I already showed you. And then that's my friend's house up there on the hill. Uh, all of these buildings, like I said, are sadly no longer furnished. But while they were furnished, this place was absolutely insane. There's a shoe shop right there. Uh, there's a barber right here. There's a restaurant. Uh, a netherite smith. This is also one of my first. Um, this is one of my first builds for 1.16. I built a netherite. Uh, netherite smith, like I said, so this is, uh, you know, my plan was for the city was uh, to make a bunch of different shops And then that is where I would go to do all of the different things So I would, you know, supposedly come here and uh, upgrade my gear here And I would go to the smelter and I would smelt stuff there, but that seemed like a lot of work So it ended up just becoming uh, like a vanity project. There's a brewery right here um, Some more little shop areas, a house, a uh, kennel, which is fun. I need to get some wolves in there uh, over here we have the main street. I made all of the buildings on the main street uh, three stories instead of just two. I think it turned out really nice. This is technically the main entrance, although there's literally nothing over here. Eventually, oh, I did not realize I had a mine down there. Forgot about that. Eventually there's going to be a port that direction. Uh, and then over here, ooh, this is the special thing. So you remember when I said that uh, over there at the castle, I built uh, another big house that I lived in for quite a long time. Right on that hill, there used to be my original house, which is the house that I probably resided in for the longest amount of time in this world. It was the first, you know, major base that I built in this world, and uh, I built a castle on top of it. So I couldn't just get rid of the house. Uh, because it's a piece of history, so I ended up relocating it down here, block for block. I took a million pictures of it, uh, right here in Peony City. Unfortunately, the basement is not here, because the basement is actually still sitting underneath of the castle, which uh, you will see pretty soon. Uh, and I made it so there's a book tour that you can do for it, which took me a long time, where it's basically like, oh, walk in here and do this and that, and then it gives you little facts about it, uh, which is fun, I guess. But yeah, this is the OG house. This house uh, is very, very old. And uh, it fits very well in Peony City because it has the exact same style of house. I got all these, um, you know, house styles uh, from this house. So, you know, a bit of history there. Here we have uh, um, stables. I named it Morgan Stable. Psst, blah, blah, blah. Morgan Stables after you know Arthur Morgan from Red Dead Redemption Two. Uh, you'll come to see that I am a big fan of that game. A uh, little dead end over here. Uh, I don't remember what this shop was. I think this was like, what was this one? It was cow insurance. That was a funny one. Uh, but yeah, this was cow insurance. I don't even know what that means. I just came up with it. Another one of these little like poster walls. Uh, welcome to South Peony, the luscious district in Minecraft. So this one, I recently figured out how to get a bunch of flowers. So I just made it the most like, you know, pretty and flowery little part of the city. And that's basically Peony City for you. Uh, that's all you got to see. That's all there is to see. And, uh, it's pretty much, that's, that's pretty much it. Oh my gosh, I have not talked for this long at one time in quite a long time, and it's really hurting my voice. So I'm gonna try to get through this as quickly as possible. Uh, this wall, if you follow it along, takes you all the way over here to the, I guess, the only other modern build in my world, apart from Nubank City. This is Kelp Corp. Basically, I remembered that you can make kelp blocks, and then those would work as fuel in furnaces. So I decided that I was gonna go green, and I made this lovely-looking Kelp Corp factory with a humongous uh, kelp farm inside of the green building. There's a little office right here, as you can see, and uh, my humongous kelp farm. Still actually really proud of the, how this looks. I think I did a good job with it. Um, there's a kelp farm in there, and then that gets funneled into a little smelter area that's attached to the side of the building, and then it all gets funneled into here, which is the main storage for it. So you'd get down here, you'd take all your dried kelp, and you'd craft it into blocks, and then you would put it in a shulker box, and you'd take it away back to your base, and then you'd use it as fuel. There's a few forklifts going around, like right here you can see, uh, you know, a forklift with kelp on it. And then over here you can see some of the kelp blocks supposedly drying in the hot desert sun. And then uh, some of these little, like, testing tanks to, I guess, test uh, what temperature kelp grows best at. It was just a fun time for me to make this. Uh, I think it turned out really well. And uh, it's basically the only build that I have that's in a desert right now. And I think it fits, because, you know, it's a factory. Over there, you can see uh, an exact replica of Stampy Longnose's um, house. Or not his house, his bedroom. So this is a lot better with the uh, with the OG texture pack. I don't know what happened to these walls right here, sorry. 
Uh, but as you can see, it's an exact replica of his uh, old house, or his old room. Sorry, I keep on saying house for some reason. Uh, and it kind of just sits right here overlooking, because I just wanted to make it, and I couldn't find a better spot, so I just kind of built it on that little hill right there. Trying to think of anything else there is in this area. Oh, yeah. Right here is uh, my little graveyard and my little church. So when my pets die, and a lot of them have, I will bury them here in this graveyard. There is a lot of dead animals in this graveyard. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I have not seen this in a long time. Oh, oh turtle. See, there was a update called 1.16.100 quite a long time ago, and it was horrible. That update destroyed all of my stuff, man. Like, it's it made chests despawn, it made animals despawn left and right. There were so many bugs. Luckily, it wasn't very long-lived, but there was that one update that just destroyed everything. And here uh, is my lovely emerald, I think I called it like the emerald temple or something. I don't even remember the names anymore at this point. Uh, you know, kind of just flexing my wealth on the floor and then some blue flames and a nice chandelier. And then right here, I have a little uh, lectern to do some preaching. And uh, behind me is the original Big Boy Chubby Panda. So my first pet in the game was this panda that kind of just wandered onto my little uh, jungle house because... I, I lived in a jungle uh, in the first place just because I thought jungles were really cool and I'd always been fascinated with them in Minecraft, so I decided to stay there. And I was kind of just taking in all the all the jungle stuff, like, uh, you know, bamboo and pandas, and one of them showed up, so I had to make it my pet. And um, Big Boy Chubby Panda lived at my house for a very, very long time. I actually just put him inside, and he never despawned, even when he didn't have a name tag on. And then one day, uh, I, he just died. I don't know what happened to him, but he just disappeared. So I got a new one, and I didn't tell anyone about it. And I confessed uh, a while ago when I built this place. So I have the original Big Boy Chubby Panda grave right there in a lovely tomb. And then the uh, the new uh, Big Boy Chubby Panda is still residing inside of the Diet Coke can. So if that is everything in my enclosure, I'm really just trying to stall on the castle... But I might just do it because there's not much else to tour at this point. Uh, so yeah, let's let's just do it. There is one main entrance to the castle that I consider the grand entrance, and it has two pathways leading up to it. One that connects to the Kelp Corp area, and then one that connects down next to Emerald Temple. These areas, okay, so basically there's a story behind all of these beehives. If you see around, uh, there is beehives everywhere. And it is because right here, this tree, which is revamped now, I made it look nicer, but it's the same tree. I planted a tree here, and it grew a beehive attached to it, and I did not know that was a thing. So I was like, oh my gosh, bees. So I uh, bred a bunch of bees here, I placed out a bunch of extra beehives, and this turned into the bee gardens of my world right here in front of the castle. It is where I've gotten most of my honey and most of my wax, as you can see. Uh, I have it all in here. And, uh, you know, honeycomb is actually just now becoming useful again, thanks to candles, which, you know, they're not in the game yet, but they will be, and they are also useful for uh, copper. So, yeah. Here is one of the main entrances to the castle. I am going to skim through this castle as quickly as possible because it is humongous. Uh, right here, we have a lovely church with a balcony up there. And uh, right here, you have a uh, the, ho the Holy Bible, you know, religion and stuff. That's, that's the Bible for you. And then you come down here, you have a nice little uh, honey. This is locally, uh, locally sourced honey, or honeycomb, I guess. And it actually makes a really nice carpet design, so I kept it in here. Uh, over here, hallway to Statue of Purity. I don't know what that's doing there at this point. I, I don't know why it's there. Uh, this is, I guess it's like a water treatment plant. It's just like the sewers of the castle. And it actually comes out of this little grate right there into a pond that is uh, under the castle. Uh, over here, we have the dog training area with a creeper hole in it. Apparently, they didn't do a very good job. Uh, all the knights and all of the... Um, uh, I guess, yeah, all the guards and the knights are dogs, because obviously there's no real people, so I just have a bunch of dogs that kind of, like, you know, mill about the world, or, I, I, sorry, mill about the castle, and, uh, supposedly, they're all trained here. Down here, I have a sadly missing door. This is the wine cellar, so uh, this place looks pretty normal at first glance, but if you come right over here to the barrel, I'm gonna be quiet for a sec, because it makes a noise, so you take the diamond, and you here... And it opens up. So you hear a little Zelda theme. It goes da na 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 And uh, it opens up a secret doorway, which will eventually, not yet, but eventually lead somewhere. 
I haven't exactly decided what that is going to lead to. If you come back on up, you have a nice kitchen right here, pretty bare bones, and a ice room with uh, all of the meat because, you know, there's no refrigerators. Back in castle time, there's some stew in the pot, and I am on fire. If we continue a boot, uh, there's a hallway right here that takes you to a closet. That is the main staircase, which I will go up in a sec. This is the game room with some pool and some darts, and I guess that's the only game in here. This staircase goes up to one of the towers. Not gonna go up there, though, because it's a waste of time. There's nothing up there. And, uh, yeah. So let's continue up the staircase to floor numero dos of the, uh, castle. Nice little, uh, closet right here, which has a secret passageway to another area. I added a few secret passageways and a few secret things, because, you know, they're castles, and, uh, all the castles have, like, weird secret passageways. Nice seating area and a desk. Uh, this is the blue wing, so every single wing of rooms have, uh, has a different color. Uh, this is the blue one. So there's a master bedroom in here with another little secret. Uh, which I like to call, what is it? Uh, it's like the safe room or something. So there's a bed. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's messed up. Oh, but yeah. So if there, was an, uh, if there was an intruder or a war going on, you'd uh, go up there and you'd be safe. Uh, but yeah, all these rooms are basically just a four-poster bed and a fireplace. Another room. Another room. And then a closet. And also some more wealth flaunting with a full set of fully enchanted <laughs> diamond armor. Uh, this way you get into the grand dining hall, which has a lovely purple theme. Reminds me a bit of a nether portal, eh? Uh, this is the throne, which used to have two uh, dogs here, both of which struck by lightning. Can't even explain how that happened. You can go and try to find the video where that happens. Basically, uh, lightning struck through at least, you know, like 15 blocks of stone uh, just to hit those two dogs. Uh, one after the other. It was ridiculous. Uh, that is a tower that my, one of my cousins has a house in. Why do my cousins have so many freaking houses in this world? Um, and uh, over here is... Oh, uh, yeah, this staircase goes down to the kitchen. Uh, so, you know, you have to have an easy way of getting all of the food and plates up and down. So there's a staircase that connects right to it. God, my voice is hurting. All right, I just took a swig of water. Hopefully it helps my voice. So up here we have the green wing, which is our, you know, second wing of rooms. All of these rooms are basically the same, although they are very, very cool with the uh, slanted roof design because this is basically in the roof, this room. So um, I had to kind of make it look nice and add in the slant because there's nothing else I could have done. Uh, another bit of wealth flaunting on both sides. I did not realize how much freaking diamond armor I had. Uh, all these rooms are basically the exact same. Nothing too special about them. Uh, and then a little closet area. Over here, I tried to make this castle kind of maze-like, by the way. So you'll notice that like some of the rooms kind of switch back and forth and they don't make much sense. But uh, that's the point. This is the Red Wing with uh, the most rooms in the entire castle in one area. So you have a little guest room, netherite armor, kids' bedroom with a bunk bed, no fireplace because, you know, kids' bedroom. Uh, this is the master bedroom. Dude, my friend came in. His name is Evan. He came in and he put a bunch of signs everywhere. I'll never forgive him. Uh, and here we have a closet again, a very nice looking closet, by the way. Another room and then, you know, another freaking room. All right, I just double checked to make sure my audio and my recording is still going, and it is. So we are going strong, baby, and I'm almost done. So we're gonna head on up to the third floor, which is the clubhouse. Unfortunately, there was a glitch in the game where all of the painting textures disappeared, so a few of them got broken because I didn't realize what was going on. Uh, so there used to be every single painting in the game in here, except for like the big ones. Uh, so that's not a thing anymore, unfortunately. I'll get them back, but yeah, this is the clubhouse, so you have a nice bar. Uh, with kegs of Diet Coke and, uh, fireplace. Dude. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is, that's basically that room. And then you keep on coming up, you keep on going until you reach the Grand Suite, which is, uh, where I sit. Because, you know, I am the, the builder of the castle, so I get to the best room in the entire castle. It is, I think, 180 blocks up. Uh, I, I mean, like, Y level 180, something like that. This is the lobby area for it. Yeah, the room has a lobby. I know, I'm chimping. 
Uh, oh my gosh. See, he puts signs everywhere, and I have to break them all now. Uh, if you come upstairs, you have, yeah, the, the tallest room in, uh, in the entire world. Uh, my master bedroom with, uh, you know, night doggo. And uh, the whole point of this room was that you could live up here for long periods of time without having to go up and down the humongous staircase. So, you know, you have a little pantry and a kitchen over there and a dining room and then a balcony. And uh, I sleep up here a lot, actually. And speaking of which, I think it'd be a good time to right now. But yeah, apart from my base, this is the uh, the main the main uh, sleeping point for me. And speaking of my base, let's head on down into the big hole, which uh, kind of just sits in the middle of my world. This is my main base, which almost has every single type of, you know, farm and every single type of thing that you could ever want inside of it. On both sides right here, we have an uh, automatic sugarcane and cacti farm. Uh, over here, we have all three types of super smelters with a very tacky looking lava roof. Uh, and then a little maintenance area back here so you can go in and uh, figure out if anything's going wrong. All of these have smelted, uh, you know, thousands upon thousands of items. To the left right here, I have a little farm area which used to have animals in each one of these. They all despawn though, except for the chickens, weirdly enough. So those guys have been there for quite a long time, but all the other ones have despawned, unfortunately. I'll get them back one day. Two of my old netherite sets of armor, so they're all slightly better. So the first one had the most bare bones, enchantments, protection, four, I'm breaking three, mending one. That was it. And then my second set had a bit more stuff on it. And then my third, which is gone because I died with it, I'll explain that in the next episode, uh, had, you know, basically exactly what this set right ha right now has. This is my main uh, hub of the base, I guess. This is kind of where everything uh, goes on. Uh, this is my storage room. On the walls, you will see all of these tools, which looks kind of weird, doesn't it? But these are all actually retired tools. So if I'll just take off a random one and you put it in an anvil, which I have to find, you will see that you cannot repair it anymore. I don't use mending on tools in this world. It is a fun little challenge for myself because I actually really enjoy the process of breaking tools, or sorry, not breaking them, uh, remaking tools and naming them and that whole thing. I really enjoy that. So I'm not a huge fan of mending on all my tools. If you notice, basically none of my tools have mending on it except for this one pickaxe, but that's because it's like a permanent pickaxe. However, I do allow mending on my armor because making new armor sucks. But yeah, this is 25 tools on the wall that I've retired over 13 months. And they will forever sit here until I find a better spot for them, which might be a museum. I used to have villagers in here, but they all despawned. Uh, this is where I keep some of the leftover books from them. I have an ender chest with uh, all of my diamonds and some netherite and uh, some of my other random stuff like an extra enchanted golden apple. Uh, and here I have some of my extra beacons just in case I need them. Uh, a bunch of snout batter patterns. Batter patterns? Banner patterns that I got from some nether busting and uh, two lodestones, which I also got from nether busting. Here's where I keep all my wool, uh, because actually I forgot to show you up here. I have a wool farm, which has, well, it normally has every single color of sheep, but right now it only has blue because I need a bunch of blue for a farm that I'll show you pretty quick. But yeah, this is automatic, so it shears them and then it picks it all up. Uh, exactly opposite of that, I have a melon and pumpkin farm, which goes uh, all hours of the day, at least that I'm on. And then my nether portal, which I'm not even going to go in the nether this episode. Uh, there's nothing to do in there. It, it, there's nothing going on. And then in here, I have my main uh, XP source. I built a pigment farm above my base. Or it's not above, it's underground still. But I built a pigment farm up there. And uh, it's a very, very easy and simple way of getting XP, and I'm very happy I built it in my base because it's so easy to just come in here and get XP. It's very efficient, by the way. All I have to do is flick this lever and pigments start spawning, and I can also uh, flick this lever to make them just fall and die. And then I used to have an automatic sorter, but uh, it broke because, you know, bedrock. Uh, because, you know, but... Right now I'm in peaceful, so nothing is spawning. Over here I have a little enchanting table with one of my only remaining pets, unfortunately, Dale the Smart Bachelor. This guy has been alive for a long time. Uh, his name is Dale because I had a horse in Red Dead Redemption whose name was Dale, and then he's smart because he's been here on this enchanting table for a long time, and then Bachelor because he used to have a wife turtle, but she died. So Dale the Smart Bachelor is here to stay. And then if we continue finally into here, we have my farm hall. This is all four main types of crops that are hooked up to automatic uh, water breakers. So they're semi-automatic, 
uh, they call me semi-automatic money adds then multiplies uh, you have to flick the lever it will send water down which will uh, break all the crops and then you have to place them all back it is quite tedious work but uh, I have a very good supply of all crops if I ever need it especially potatoes because potatoes are in fact my uh, main source of food in this world and then, of course all these chests have basically every single item to my name in them uh, anything from smooth stone which I don't actually have very much of right now to uh, I don't know Redstone, you know, I have every single type of thing you could possibly ever need in this storage system, uh, including some of my special stuff, like a lot of emeralds, uh, some gold, some iron, lapis, and some coal. You know, it's a, it's a really cool place. Alright, so that is every main build in the entire world, I think. So now we're going to have to switch to uh, the final things to show off, which are the mob farms, uh, or just the farms in general. So right here we have the creeper farm, my magnum opus. This thing took me so long to build, especially considering all of the main spawning platforms require you to place trapdoors on the roof, and that took a very, very long time, and also a very, very large amount of, uh, of wood. The way this farm works is it's up in the air so that nothing else on the floor will spawn, so you get only... Uh, spawning areas up here in the sky, uh, which are specialized for creepers. They will spawn on these little platforms, which have specific requirements so that only creepers spawn, and then they fall into four uh, different sets of trident killers, which will then be picked up and put into a chest. This is how I get all my fireworks. Uh, one AFK session here gets you about eight, eight shulker boxes of uh, gunpowder, so, you know, you do pretty good with it, and then I get the paper from my automatic sugarcane farm down on my base. This was, this is by far the biggest farm I've ever built. Uh, maybe not counting the squid farm, but that's only because I'm doing extra stuff to it. This is the most technical and the most uh, impressive farm I've ever built, and it works like a dream. And uh, fun fact, I actually built this before uh, my elytra. So, you know, this was in preparation for my elytra, so I had to get all my fireworks ready. Uh, so I, I made this farm, and I made a bunch of fireworks with it, and I got a steady supply, and uh, I've been living off of it ever since. Farm number two is a considerable distance away. You're going to have to fly pretty far this way to get to it, and it is a raid farm. Uh, so it gives you a lot of emeralds. I have an automatic sorter on it so that it only gives you emeralds, and it works very, very well. Again, didn't come up with that design, though. That was purely... A tutorial and you will notice there is this giant structure around it this structure is completely unnecessary basically what I do when I feel guilty about having an overpowered farm is I just build something ridiculous around it that is uh, completely unnecessary and in this case it was like a skyscraper looking thing so you can see what it looks like on the map and if we come on up I have my uh, AFK spot right here which, uh, if I can actually use my elytra, uh, this is it, my uh, AFK spot. And then if I come all the way down, I can actually give you a glimpse on the inside. It's a pretty simple farm, would recommend it to anyone. It gives me a lot of emeralds. And I guess uh, as we're going past my base, I will give you a little glimpse into the nether. There's not very much going on in there though, just a nether hub and then an ice road that goes to a specific spot. But I recently just finished the ice road and I kind of want to show it off, so I'm just going to do it and I'm going to take you in there. Alrighty, let's haul. Alrighty, let's head on into the Nether. In here we have the uh, what's this called? The Nether Hub. So that direction goes to my villager breeding area. Nothing special over there. And this is how you get to uh, 1.16 Nether, uh, because I did go into the Nether before 1.16, so I had to make a specific area to it. And this big thing right here is my ice road, which takes you to 1.17 chunks. So it's very, very quick. I will take you on a quick little trip in it. And I made uh, pillars to go along with it. So I made it, you know, make, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know what the word is, structural sense. So I made a very unnecessary choice to put uh, pillars under it to make it look realistic. It was very, very fun and it looks very, very good. And uh, I will definitely continue this style if I ever decide to make another ice road. So it kind of just pierces right on through the nether. I think I named it like Treachery Pass or something, and it takes you all the way down here through a, uh, I don't even remember what this biome's called, uh, a Basalt Plains or something, and then into a boring nether area, and then I picked up a passenger on accident, hello sir, and then this takes you to official 1.17 chunks right here, 
which I'm building a secret project that I'm only going to give you a glimpse of. Whoa, that's what I'm building. And now I'm going to go back into the portal uh, because there's nothing else to see here, I promise. So let's head on back. And on our way back, uh, after we get back to the base, there's only one more thing that I have to show you. And then the entire tour is done. And it is just about 50 minutes of footage, uh, which is a long time for me to talk. I am just going to count this as like a regular episode, episode 48, or actually 47, uh, and I'm making this because, first of all, I want to make a world tour, and also because uh, world tours often bring a lot of foot traffic to a channel, and I'm kind of just trying out new stuff, which is why I'm asking people to subscribe at the beginning, which, you know, I'm just testing out what works for me and, you know, what, what helps. So a little explanation on the final thing that I have to show in this world, and it is, like I said, a squid farm. Basically, uh, while I was making banners, I was like, man, it sucks to get black dye. You gotta go and you gotta kill squid, and it's just the worst. No one likes to do it. So I looked up a squid farm, expecting there to be a very simple and very easy uh, squid farm that I could build that would be, very, you know, kind of small, and uh, none of them were small. They were all very large, and they were all very high up in the air, so uh, I ended up just building it. So I headed to an ocean biome that is, you know, like 200 blocks away from my main base area that uh, just happens to connect perfectly uh, right next to the monorail, so you see it as you go by. After it was done, though, I thought it looked super ugly, and I was also kind of guilty about how much ink it really gave you, because it's kind of overpowered. Uh, so I decided to uh, make up for how overpowered it is. I would spend a ridiculous amount of wool making a blimp around it, which is currently what I'm doing. Although I'm only like a third of the way done. Uh, as you can see, you can see the squid farm inside with normal squid farm looking things, tanks on both edges, and then a little AFK spot. And right now, I am currently building a um, uh, blue wool cylind cylinder, cylinder around it with uh, little rounded edges, which is eventually going to become uh, the blimp. And then on the side, I'm going to write ink, ink, the first ink being spelled I-N-K, and the second one being spelled I-N-C, and I think my elytra just broke. Crap. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be ink, ink. Uh, it's, you know, I and C and then, sorry, I and K and then I and C for like Ink Incorporated and uh, it's going to become a blimp and it's going to look really, really cool and it's going to cost a lot of resources. But unfortunately, my elytra is broke, so I think we have to end off the tour right here. This world has been going for 13 months. It is 100% survival and uh, it is very, very, very big. It is 1.1 gigabyte, gigabytes, um, and it is... It's my pride and joy. I've been working on it for a very long time. Again, if you liked the video, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. Subscribe. Jesus Christ, I cannot talk. I've been talking for way too long. Uh, if you liked the video, subscribe. If you didn't like it, don't subscribe. It's simple. If you don't want to subscribe, don't subscribe. I'm not forcing anyone to do anything. I'm just seeing if me saying subscribe actually gets people to subscribe. So, thank you all so much for watching. This has been episode 47, and I really, really hope you guys have a great day. Later.